continuation from uh, last Sunday, Christ our Rock, Christ the Rock, and uh, we had a few technical uh, problems last Sunday with displaying some of the images, and I hope it's going to work uh, this morning. And uh, the title of this message, even though it's continuation, is, is called the, uh, the Feet of Iron and Clay. The Feet of Iron and Clay. And I'm just, to recap, I'm going to read, uh, we read, read that last Sunday as well. We're going to read from uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 32 and 33. And then uh, I'll open the message in prayer. Daniel 2, 32, 33. This image hands was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. We already uh, spoke a little bit about that last Sunday, but before we continue I just want to pray. Lord Jesus, I speak anointing on these words and anointing on this message, that we get a better understanding of the world we're living in, and for those who are spiritually discerning, we can see that the whole coronavirus restrictions are being used to control this world. And we can see where it is leading and prophetic words are being fulfilled right in front of us. But Father God, I pray that through the, the preaching of the word this morning and teaching, it becomes more clear how your plan is unfolding right in front of us and I have a better understanding of the world around us and especially of you, Lord Jesus. You are the rock, the cornerstone of our life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see how much I can squeeze in a half an hour and 40 minutes. Um, if we can put on the next image, uh, Brendan, just to remember how much we can uh, squeeze in. Now, I've heard the argument in the church world is like, oh, it's not so important to know all this stuff as long as you know the Lord Jesus. Well, I disagree with that. Sure. Because why then is 60% of the scriptures prophetic? And of that 60%, 90% is regarding the days we live in today. Yeah. Just to summarize, we remember that the head of gold was Nebuchadnezzar, and then they had the Medio Persian Empire. And the amazing thing is, if that's all fulfilled, and this prophecy was centuries, we got a new a drummer in the making for the worship team. If this is um, prophesied centuries before it was going to happen, yep. how much more accurate even regarding the last days? And then of course we had Alexander the Great, and then we had Rome, and then we have uh, Papal Rome, who's basically, and we're coming to that in a minute, to the Roman Catholic Church, and when I talk about it, we're not talking about people who are Roman Catholic. We're not talking about people. We're talking about the institution and what is connected to it. Because the Lord God has people reserved for Him everywhere, even in the Roman Catholic Church too. So we're not speaking judgment or condemnation on anybody who attends that church. We're only referring to the fact that in the institution as such. And I believe we'll come to that more as, as time allows, that... The Roman Catholic Church is a continuation of the Roman Empire. And I'm coming with a lot of facts. Make notes if, if you want or watch it again on YouTube or Facebook. Because I'm going to give you a lot of details, a lot of information this morning. And it is so important that we know this. And to also defy this argument where a lot of pastors and churches say, oh, it's not that important that we know that. No, it's not unto salvation. It is accepting the Lord Jesus Christ and repenting of our sins is unto salvation. But if we don't understand the times we live in, then we can be easily deceived. Because the Lord Jesus warns four times in Matthew 24, do not be deceived. And many walking around, even Christians, uh, are being deceived. Even what I'm preaching this morning, with most pastors I would have contact with, or sometimes bump, they, they don't even want to talk about this. They're talking about the, the best is still going to come in your life. Oh, really? Yes, it is. With the Lord Jesus. Yeah. But not here on earth. And uh, this is all prophesied. And that's why I'm talking about this this morning. So, we see the feet. There's a mixture of iron and clay. 
And I'm going to talk this morning about the setting up of the Antichrist in Europe and why it is Europe. I'm completely not interested who the Antichrist is and I'm not going on an online search who it could be. That, that's not what we're talking about here this morning. He's going to come, it is prophesied, and the Antichrist spirit, which we see in our nation as well, is well and alive. As we recently saw, a pastor is, uh, was arrested in Melbourne and these, these police, which I speak in respect about the police, but they were too keen, too happy to arrest this man. I mean, they should be chasing criminals, not pastors who have an open air meeting. Yeah. Having social distancing at the same time in the open air and they're taking Sometimes. him down, this poor pastor, as like he's a drug lord or a criminal with yeah. a SWAT team. What really concerns me is the absolute silence of our Prime Minister and the MPs regarding this issue. And I'm really concerned, having worked ourselves in communist nations in the 1980s and 90s, um, it's like, oh, Lord, it is right here. And a lot of people don't recognize it because they've grown up in freedom and haven't worked in suppressed nations. So we are arriving in a very interesting time and what is really concerning is the absolute silence of our government regarding issues like that, which are very important. Yeah, so we're reading uh, the next verse, and I'm trying to keep a thread, a line of thread here, and giving you a lot of information, you will see some other images. We're going to the next scripture from Revelation chapter 13, verse 13 to 15. And this is regarding the Antichrist, Antichrist having been set up. He performs great signs so, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man, and he deceived those who dwell on the earth by those signs, which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So we have two beasts coming out of the sea, uh, sorry, one beast coming out of the earth and one beast out of the sea. The beast out of the sea is the Antichrist, the beast out of the earth is the false prophet, which could very likely be the, the Pope. Just look online what the Pope is saying, he's not Christian, I'm not judgmental, what comes out of his mouth is not Christian at all. It's not biblical and we are allowed to judge as Christian what is biblical, not a person's soul. I'm not talking about that. But we are allowed to judge as Christians what is Christian and what is backed up by scriptures and a lot of what comes out of the recent Pope's mouth and previous ones as well is anti-biblical. Leader of, of a one uh, billion people, church members, what comes out of his mouth is not Christian. He could, that position could very well be a uh, position of a false prophet. Yet so if we put on the next image if you can, Brandon, because this is key, which is connected to this. Do your research online. That's already up. It's already up. This massive uh, statue is going to be in 21 cities before the end of 2021 around the world. And this image can change into a famous person. It can change into Ronald Reagan, change into John Kennedy or a famous actor. I don't understand how the technology works, but from what I understand, and if you can see, it's about the height of, of a, uh, it's higher than the other buildings behind it, so it probably maybe even the same dimensions of the uh, statue of Nebuchadnezzar. I don't believe in coincidences. I could not find an online the exact dimensions. It's an Irish company who are developing this, and it's going to be in 2021 20, cities around before the end of 2021. And so people can view that for entertainment, so maybe they want to be a famous, want to see a famous Hollywood actor, it will change into that image, it's like 3D, and yet it is real. Now we just read Revelation 13, I wonder when I was a young Christian, uh, 19, and I was already taught on the end time prophecy in our church, how on earth are they going to do that? <laughs> With, I didn't even have a mobile phone. Our children don't understand that, but we were very happy with our mobile phones. Anyway, um, so are we getting close or is, or is it me? I'm not saying that this is the Antichrist. I'm saying the technology is where, if ever wanted reading in the book of Revelation, how can the whole world see those images? 
And of course, it could very easily be that the Antichrist in another location is being projected on these 21 or even more potentially in the world around it, maybe in every main city around the world in the future. And that's how everybody can see him and will have to worship him. Yeah. So we see here with the uh, Antichrist, here there is a false resurrection because... Antichrist, uh, from what I know on the teachings from Derek Prince, who was a Greek scholar, he said a better translation is pseudo-Christ. So pseudo means like he is like Christ, but he's not Christ, which is a better translation in regards to Antichrist, though he's Antichrist as well, is that he has a false resurrection, he seemingly has a wound, some say a head wound, and he is again miraculously revived. Whatever happens, whether it was just a stage play that he was wounded or not. It's a false resurrection. And the miracles that the, the false prophet, so the beast out of the earth does, are real. And he's imitating the, the miracles of Moses and Elijah, but they're not real. I remember Derek Prince saying, the Pentecostal charismatic movement is the most likely church movement to be deceived by false miracle signs and wonders. And that's what we see happening today. They have people, all sorts of things are happening to people, and they say it's the power of the Holy Spirit. It is not. And I don't like seeing those things because you would see the same manifestations Lottery. in a mental health ward, and our God is a God of order, and a God of discipline, and a God of correction, and a God of wholesomeness. Mm -hmm. And so when people are being set free from the demonic oppression, you will have manifestations like you see in the four Gospels, but they will be set free, and it's all done in order, because my God is a God of order and not of anarchy. Mm -hmm. And you're allowed to say good preaching, Pastor. Good preaching. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> A false resurrection and, and false miracles. So the giant in 21 cities. And uh, you can take the image of any famous person. And it's the size of a high rise. Now there's a sequence here. We're going to Daniel chapter 7 verse 7 and 8. And I'm reading from Daniel and connecting these two scriptures. After this I saw in a night in the night visions and behold a fourth beast dreadful and terrible exceedingly strong and had huge iron teeth the Roman Empire is known for using a lot of iron in their warfare interesting uh, dreadful and terrible exceedingly strong it had huge iron teeth it was devouring breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet and that's what the Roman legions did it was different from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns it was considered, I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up from among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there, uh, in this horn, were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. So we're talking here about the Antichrist claiming to be God himself. If we can put on the next image, uh, Brendan. So... What I want to focus on here and make us aware and alert is that Babylon, the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar, was destroyed by the Medes and Persians and later rebuilt again. Then it was destroyed by Alexander the Great. He went as far as Babylon and it was destroyed by him. And he actually set up his palace, Alexander the Great, in Babylon. What's the difference with the Roman Empire? The Roman Empire in the 4th century, or close to the 5th century, was destroyed by the Germanic tribes. They came down and burned Rome down by the Germanic tribes, and not in Babylon, but in Europe. Have you ever wondered, and this is all a connected connection with the prophecy, prophetic words from Revelation and Daniel I just read, have you ever wondered when you read Revelation 17 and 18 where that Babylon is? I believe, and I'm going to prove this morning as much time allows, that Babylon is in Europe. Because they imported Babylon. Where do you get that from, Pastor? Hold on. <laughs> the next image, uh, Brendan, if you can. Yeah. So we have the little horn coming up. Out of the ten, but he, he pushes out three. There are several theories about them. We know the G7, world leaders. It could refer to that. 
but I don't necessarily think so, and I don't want to make a theological point of this, of right or wrong. I'm just giving here some suggestions and thoughts when you read the news headlines. So if we can go to the next image. The ten horns of Daniel 7. In Europe, traditionally, you had the Visigoths, that was Spain. That's now called Spain. The Anglo-Saxons is England. The Franks is France. The Alemanni is Germany. The Burgundians is Switzerland. The Lombards is Italy. The Suevi is Portugal. The Heruli don't live anymore. They've been absorbed in the other European nations or rooted up or destroyed in warfare. The Ostrogoths are rooted up. The Vandals were also part of destroying Rome, actually. Um, they are, don't exist anymore in Europe as such as a nation or a people group. Yeah? So seven out of these ten still exist and have modern nation names. And when you say whereas countries like Belgium and the Netherlands and all that, all that Belgium is pretty much half France and half French and half Dutch descendants. The, the Dutch people are really part of the Germanic tribes um, and the Danish as well. So you, you can see how these people groups in Europe survived and three are rooted up. That's my theory. It is of theory um, what I've studied and what I'm thinking that it will refer to. But it's not if there's other theories around, I don't deny them and I will investigate them as well as potential. Yeah, so I just want to give this a little bit as a, as a backing on uh, Daniel and about these horns being rooted up. So we're continuing to the next scripture from Genesis and there's a line, there's a thread here of taking us to Europe from Babylon. So, reading from Genesis 11 verse 1 and 9, I go very fast and you need to pay, pay well attention. And as Australians, or Kiwis, or wherever we're from, we are also a majority, in respect to the Maori people and Aboriginal people, but the majority um, are a European descent and an extension of Europe. And much the way we think and believe, we are Greeks or Europeans in our culture, in the law in Australia. So biblically, prophetically, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the US are very much descendants of the Europeans who I mean, a lot of people don't like that. It's history. You can't change history. Um, the Europeans who spread their culture and their influence around the world and colonized the world, and uh, a lot of people are upset about it. You can't erase history. This is a fact. So we are of this European thinking and an expansion of Europe, even in Australia. Yeah. So uh, Genesis 11, verse 1 to 9. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, so that's, and they dwelt there, that's in the present day Iraq. Then they said to one another, come, let us make bricks, and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had uh, asphalt for mortar. Pretty clever in those days. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Oh, <laughs> interesting about icons and statues. Anyway, let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. This is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. This whole look up for a second before I continue reading. That's exactly what we're doing today. The common language around the world is in, in, in science and in all sorts of other aspects and in airports, everything is English. So the world accomplished one uh, united uh, language. Uh, I mean, most people, if you go to Europe, even though they speak several other languages, they will be close to fluent in English. Um, so we can see how things are um, developed to the same thing and we're building again the Tower of Babel through the World Wide Web. It started, the World Wide Web started in darkness and it continued in darkness. But that's another message and I have a lot of information on that as well. Yeah, but anyway, let's continue reading in verse 7. Come, let us go down there, let us, so the Trinity, yeah, God the Father, God the Son and the Holy Spirit was already there and they confused their language that they may not understand one another's speech, so that the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, which include as far as Australia and New Zealand, obviously, and they ceased building the city. Therefore its name is called ba uh, Babel, or in Hebrew, Babel, because there the Lord confused the language um, of all the earth, 
and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. So Babel. Yeah. So if we, um, this is important, also in apply a context. If the Lord then intervenes, saying nothing for them will be accomplished. I mean, the world, the world is close to generating a mixture. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he thought it was fantasy, but the world and science is creating very close to sort of human DNA combined with chips and robots and making strange things. And I'm not an ex expert in that field, but you can find a lot of information online on that. So if that's happening today, um, how much more so would the Lord also put a stop to this today? And we are in those days. Yeah? If we can put on the next image, and this is in connection. So, here we're going back to Europe. The Treaty of Rome on March 25, 1957, two treaties were signed in Rome that gave birth to the European Economic Community. And then later a treaty was signed, we were actually pastoring a church at that time in Maastricht, the Netherlands, in 1992. An other treaty was signed and they changed their name to the European Union. And then in 2007 in Lisbon, Portugal, they signed an other agreement of 28 nations in Europe, which even strengthened the European uh, Union with a one leader, unelected leader. Listen carefully. <laughs> so if we can go to... Uh, the next image. This is a poster put out by the European Union. Yeah. Europe, many tongues, one voice. Remember that scripture we just read about one speech? And then we see here a star, which is the occultic five-pointed star, with the yin-yang symbol, Islam symbol, Christian symbol, also, uh, even the David star, all sorts of occultic symbols, a mixture of religions in an occultic five-pointed star, Europe, many tongues, one, free for all, I would add, besides Christians. Yeah. <laughs> the Council of Europe. Now pay attention to these little stars and pay attention to this picture. Where, does this, where do they get this picture from in their poster? If we go to the next image. This is the Tower of Babel, painted by a Dutch painter, Jan Pieter van Breughel, in the 17th century. It's exactly identical. Of course, the artist, um, the painter here, went on what he thought it would look like based on the biblical description. But the interesting thing is that the European Union put the poster out with an exact copy of that what he painted. Let us go to the next image. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that! Yeah. The European Parliament building in Strasbourg, France, and the likeness of that painting and the Tower of Babel is absolutely stunning. It's mind blowing. The similarity. I'm going very fast here, but, it, but this is important. And so, the Tower of Babel, and then the next image. The EU Parliament building, it cost a total of, at that time, $12 billion complex. It was completed in the year 2000. Stands as a symbol of the pride of the pride of man and takes his rebellions against God. Yeah. Wow. EU building, a symbol of pride and rebellion. And next image. And I've grown up in Europe, and I'm saying this with sadness. Europe kicked God out. Europe invited, and we're going to explain it in a minute, Europe invited Babylon in. Europe exports satanic worship. Europe exports liberal lifestyle. Europe promotes globalism. And Europe is very anti-Israel. And has been. And that's why two world wars are fought here. In regards to the Roman Empire, and we use the names for the days and the, the months of the year. They're all referring to Roman and Greek gods. Sunday even. The sun god. I mean all the, the names. Of the, it's everything. To, and we still use the Roman numerals to some degree. And even. So we, I just want to explain here where we are at ourselves. And this is important to know. So Europe kicked uh, God out their life. Yeah. Now we're reading from uh, Revelation 17 verse 3 to 6 and no 
many, I'm trying to cover everything this morning that I want that I could say about this topic, but I want us to challenge us when we read the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, you start things coming, hey, things start put, um, clicking, putting, we're putting things together here. Romans 17, verse 3 to 6. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy. Having seven heads, oh, seven heads and ten horns. See how, how it all starts connecting. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones. And pearls having in her hand a, and having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the ab ab abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. This is in combination, I think I could teach on Revelation 7, 17 and 18 for a few hours, but summarizing it here, this is the Roman Catholic Church. Why is this the Roman Catholic Church as an institution? We're not speaking bad about Roman Catholic people, and there's also born-again Christians among them. But we need to warn here, about the history of the institution. The Golden Cup. What do you know from the Roman Catholic Church? What's the center? It's the Communion Cup. And the Roman Catholic Church's doctrine believes that you have to partake of this cup to be saved. Same as you have to confess to a priest. It's very subtle, but very different from evangelical biblical beliefs. Also, the Roman Catholic Church was one of the starters of the Spanish Inquisition and many other persecutions to Europe and they're saying that the Roman Catholic Church as an institution has shed more blood than any uh, communist leader or any dictator in the recent past or in history or has shed the blood of true Christians of believers because they wanted to re-establish a Roman holy empire and these naughty people who are meeting in secret, just reading the Bible secretly, because the Bible was forbidden by the Roman Catholic Church starting from the early to the late Middle Ages. They were meeting in secret, studying the Word of God, praying and having communion together. They were severely persecuted because they did not fit into the Roman Catholic Church and they were killed and martyred by the thousands, by the ten thousands and some say even millions. So to me, also in the context, Rome is the city built on seven hills. The Treaty of the European Union in 1957 is signed in Rome. The Roman Holy Empire was continued after the last Roman Empire, uh, um, Emperor, and the Popes took over that position. Hence, their clothing was very similar to the Roman centurions and officers in Caesar with purple and red and these funny things on their head which that resembled the Roman Empire. There is no biblical proof or um, backing that we have to wear these funny clothes and they all have uh, to do with the resembling of the colors and the power and the pomp of the Roman Empire. And why on earth had the Vatican to be, in this, to be built in the same place as Caesar had his palace? Oh, that's coincidence, Pastor. You're just making these things up. Or have a wonderful imagination. No. It is so obvious. It is right in front of us. And that's why what, for example, the, the globalists are doing now, they're completely open about it. They don't even hide it anymore, and Europe isn't hiding either what they are doing and what they want to do. Let us continue. So look at the EU Council in Brussels. <laughs> what? Oh, what's that? That's a yeah. woman riding a beast. How did this artist come up with this? <laughs> a woman riding a beast. If we're reading, uh, I don't know if I have this scripture here. What's the next scripture on that? Um, Brendan, the next age? Let's see if we have that. The next mis uh, image after that? Yeah. Well, maybe I don't have it exactly in the right uh, sequence. 
But this is important to remember also, and we're going into... Um, what's that the next image after that, Brenda? After the... Uh, no, no, you know, but we're going too fast. The U, U Council building in Brussels, that was after the scripture of Revelation 17, yeah. So we go to the next image. Oh, yeah. So we know that it's from the book of Revelation, the woman of riding the beast. And you might say, oh, that statue in the front of the EU, EU, EU Parliament in Brussels is coincidence. The woman riding the beast, we find in 1945 on the 5 Deutsche Mark Bank in the note in Germany, in 1979 in a painting on the Berlin Wall in Germany, in 1984 in a British stamp commemorating the second European Parliament elections, in 92 in a German uh, European coin, we find it back on the back of a European coin, we find it back on a painting in the airport lounge in Brussels, we find it back on a German telephone card. We find it back on two euro coins in Greece. The woman riding the beast and then in front of the EU Parliament. Now we're going somewhere with this because the whole point I'm trying to make is that Babylon is Europe and Europe is Babylon. The previous empires, including Alexander the Great, they uh, defeated Babylon in Babylon. Rome was defeated at Rome by the Germanic tribes and then it is continued to the so-called Holy Roman Catholic Empire or Church. Yeah? And they imported it. Yeah. So, next one. This is all important. The rape of Europa. In Greek mythology, the story of Zeus dis dis disguised himself as a white bull in order to seduce the princess Europa, who was gathering flowers. When she approached the bull and got on its back, the bull seized the occasion to run away with her and eventually rape her. After her death, she received divine honors as Queen of Heaven. That's where the European flag comes from. So let us continue. I know the time is limited, but I want us to really get a grip on this. Yeah? So meet Rose, Queen of Heaven, who worships Mary, the Roman Catholic Church. Without in ignorance, mostly, they do not realize, first of all, Mary is not the mother of God. God has always been. Mary was chosen for the, by the Holy Spirit to have the Lord Jesus uh, become in her womb. The Lord Jesus has always been. He only chose to lay down His heavenly majesty and come in the form of a human being in Mary's womb. But Mary is not the mother of God. And this whole thing, and that's the Roman Catholic Church has done that throughout the centuries, they take pagan things and make them Christian, including Easter and Christmas. Yeah. Including the worship of the Queen of Heaven, which we find back as far as Babylon and Greek mythology. And they turned it into Mary, but always that circle of crowns above her head. Mm -hmm. Next image. The Queen of Heaven is a title given by them also, and it continued throughout the centuries, the title given by the Babylonians to the earthly mother of Nimrod, which was the founder of the Tower of Babel, the builder of Babylon. Yeah? I'm going to close this, this soon, but this, this is um, important. Yeah? Um, oh, just the next page. Yeah. So we go to the next image, which is, oh, the European flag. Oh, coincidence, an artist just thought to put a few yellow stars on there. No, it's not a coincidence. There's all more behind us, yeah? So next we're reading from Revelation 2.13, and I'm concluding how the Europeans imported Babylon right into the heart of Babylon, and that's where the Antichrist will rise. Revelation 2.13 I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name, and did not deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was the leader of the church at that time, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Oh, Satan dwells there? How strange. 
show the next image of the city of Pergamon, which is this is left in present-day Turkey of the city of Pergamon, which we find back in the book of Revelation. There was a very strong and lively church. They were severely persecuted, but stood strong. And the Lord Jesus did not require anything else of that church, and he said, hold on till I come. The Lord is saying exactly the same to us, because the satanic presence through uh, wokeness, through all the gender stuff, is just coming in like a flood of evil. And again, Babylon is coming upon us, and the center is Europe. Yeah, so if we go to the next image, say, oh, that's fine. Um, it's in Turkey, so it doesn't bother me. Just click on that. Yeah. The Pergamon Museum. Where is that? That's in Berlin. In Germany. Oh, that's interesting. Let's go to the next image. Now we're inside the museum. And since 1930, under the, the rise of Hitler and the Nazis, the altar, altar of Zeus has been imported to Berlin. The seat of Satan, the altar to Zeus, has been imported to this museum in Berlin, even survived the Second World War, and it's still there today. Did you know that Hitler wanted to rebuild Babylon? <laughs> Coincidence not. No. Yeah, so next image. Why is this so important? Because Hitler was one of the greatest, besides Caesar and others, the greatest persecutor of Jews. Sadly enough, today, the contemporary church has largely been following Israel replacement theology and are subtly anti-Semitic. Oh, the Ishtar gate to Babylon. This has been preserved, bricks have been taken by archaeologists and rebuilt, guess where? In the museum in Berlin, the gate to Babylon. In the, and if you look at the map of Europe, Berlin is pretty much in the heart of Europe. The location of Berlin, geographically. Yeah, next image. Oh, what is that? That is the Zeppelin Feld in German. And the architect Albert Speer designed it after the Zeus altar in Nuremberg, south of Germany, Bavaria. This is what you've seen in documentaries and in movies where Hitler was standing there on the platform and all his legions, his armies and tanks marching in front of him and uh, giving a vow and swearing an oath that they will fight for the death, to the death, and they did, for him. They had to all swear an oath in front of this altar that they will conquer Europe and fight till the death. And you see them raising their hands, the German soldier, the, and, and greet, greeting Hitler, but they are also all swearing an oath in front of the altar of Zeus. And Germany paid a heavy price. There was very few young men. Germany was pretty much 90% lost of its males, 90% of its males in 1945 and had to rebuild again. They paid a heavy price. But the point I'm trying to make here is that and by the way, it's an interesting thing, is that the only two, the two countries who still support Israel today in Europe are actually Austria and Germany. <laughs> they were the greatest persecutors at first, and now they're actually standing with Israel. Germany has, and Austria too, largely have repented from the Second World War, and God is merciful. Yeah, so, why, and I know you're going to, why, um, did, it's, it's not a normal, regular message I preach. Why did I preach this? The first reason is that the Lord said to Abraham, I desire to share with you what I'm about to do with Sodom and Gomorrah. And I think the Lord is doing the same to us today, sharing with us through the prophetic words and hopefully also through other pastors and through various teachings, that the times we live in today, and that the times are urgent, and if the Lord came down to the, by the building the Tower of Babel, which we are doing again, the Lord will also intervene. How is He going to intervene? He's going to intervene, first of all, through the rapture, 
And it's going to take all those born again believers who have repented of their sins and love the Lord Jesus with all their heart. He's going to take them out and then he is going to deal with Israel and the world from Revelation chapter 4 to 21. Because he wants to deal with Israel and cause Israel to repent and he brings judgment on this world. We are not appointed to suffer God's wrath or judgment. And that's why the Lord has revealed through the Apostle Paul that the rapture is going to happen first. Yeah? The other reason is that in regards to the news headlines we read today, the things I just shared, and it's not all of it, it's only squeezed into 40 minutes, is that, that we are aware of the prophecies of the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. That we live in right in us. And what concerns me is that the church world at large is completely ignoring this. And there's still a lot of messages online. The, bad, the better is still to come. I wish. <laughs> yeah. People, we're going to get into hard times. It would be good to stock up a bit of extra food. It would be good to be spiritually ready. It would be good if your heart is ready to meet the Lord Jesus anytime. Because I believe in the context of what I judge towards and the way I view Europe based on the history and present facts is that the time is ripe for the... I don't know who he is and I'm not interested. That the time is ripe for the Antichrist to set himself up over this world because people are getting fed up with bad government, bad science yeah. and a leader will rise up and deal with the economical crisis that the governments are creating themselves by printing more money to keep job keeper going and everybody's own economy is doing well. No. no. Deception. Deception. There's one more thing I want to share and what is practiced today. Sorry about that. Um, is that one of the strategies of the Knights Templar and from that the Freemasons came forth and one of their, and I could teach another half hour on that, is say that make governments borrow money. Hmm. The Knights Templar were the richest organization in Europe and how did they become rich? All these crusaders going to Jerusalem, to the Holy Land, as, as they didn't have bank accounts today, and they're the inventor of the checkbook, is that those knights and soldiers had to leave behind a written note with their signature on it and leave all their possessions to the Knights Templar organization with the blessing of the Pope. And so if they returned, now that's where the key is, 90% of them didn't return fighting Muslims or diseases on their way and forth and back, then the Knights Templar had this check of this soldier or knight fighting in the Holy Land Lo and behold, they started banking institutions. From that came the Enlightenment group in Germany, secret societies, Freemasons, etc., etc. And one of their philosophies is, and it's all in the open, you can find that stuff online or in research or in libraries, is that make governments borrow money. That was one of their strategies, so you make them weak. Is, is the light going on? What's yeah. happening today? Yeah, yeah. yeah, all right. I know I can't share everything. Let us stand to our feet if we can. I know a, I normally preach a very different message in a sense more of building us up in the faith and, and going to holiness. And this is more, a lot of it is uh, history facts combined with uh, prophecy. But I hope this was helpful and uh, that you can share that with other people as well and encourage them. Father God, we want to be encouraged with you. And at the end of the day, we know that um, you are the chief cornerstone and no matter what happens we studied that in last Sunday's message you, the rock, destroyed all these empires with one blow and it was supernatural and we put our trust this morning on that rock Christ our rock the chief cornerstone the foundation of our salvation for what you have accomplished on the cross and I pray blessing on all those who are not well, can't be here this morning or traveling or away. Father God, a blessing on us this morning. That we go forth from strength to strength, from glory to glory, and overcome in Jesus' name. And are ready for your return in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.